Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge India once again. This is the next video in the Azure series. First of all, thanks a lot for all the appreciation and support which you have shown for the Azure videos. And uh, we will continue to bring more and more such videos. All right, so in this particular video, we are going to talk about next set of things. We'll understand about subscriptions, we'll understand how the users are there, how the users get access to it, and some those type of stuff. I request you to watch the video till then because there are gonna be some more information which you would find useful, which we'll talk about at the end. Right, so I have summarized few things here for you and I'll also try to show you the same in the Azure portal, right? So first of all, if you remember in the previous video, we, we went ahead and created a new Azure account. And after that, we also created a new subscription. Now in that particular subscription, it was showing as free subscription. So if I, if I have to show you that, if you see here, if I go to subscriptions, you can see this is the subscription which I created. And this is actually a free subscription if I click on this. Uh, I renamed it, right? That's why you are saying it, seeing it as KI subscription, but this is currently a free subscription. And as you know, I've got some amount of uh, credits which I can use for the first uh, 30 days. Right, and I've got take 25 more days before which it expires. Now, some of you might be thinking, can we just go ahead and create one more subscription, right? And we get more, uh, you know, more credits, right? Uh, yeah, we all might be thinking about it. But if you try to do that, you will see that you would not get any more credits. See, we need to understand that that you would get credits only, only for the first time when you create an account, right? If you try to create again, you know, a new subscription within the same account, you would not get it, right? So that is something for us to understand. As you can see, I tried to just create a new subscription and I come to this particular screen and you can see I do not get the free offer here. In the last video, when, you, when we created the new subscription, we had one more offer here available, which was free one but here we do not have it anymore. So that means if you go ahead and create more subscriptions under this account, they have, I mean, you need to choose pay as you go, or basically a model in which you are gonna do the payment. You would not get any free credits. So that was just first small short thing. Now here is the thing, in this, in this particular subscription, we need to understand that what permissions do we have and how things are working. So before that, let me just go ahead and show you a few things. So when we create a new Azure account, as we did, right? What happens is an Azure Active Directory, an Azure AD gets created along with it, right? Uh, and as the name says, Azure Active Directory, what does that do? I mean, in simple terms, the work of Azure, Direct Azure Active Directory is to just store all the identities, basically username, passwords, and all such things, right? So as you can see, if I go here and I click on the left hand side as your active directory, I would be able to see that there is one default directory which is created, right? And you can also see here something knowledge India in gmail dot on microsoft.com. So this name it picks up from your, you know, whatever is your email address which you have given, it picks up the first part from that and then it will be dot on microsoft.com that's the way uh, you know this naming convention works and as you can see it is it is of the free tier azure ad free so this ad gets created now please understand in case of uh, azure all the identities get stored in ad right so uh, all the user management etc you can do from there right so my user if i go ahead and click on users here on the left hand side you would be able to see that there is this particular user which we created, right, with which I'm logged in also at this point of time. This particular guy is a member of this particular AD, understood? And if you try to see here, on the right hand side, you will also see, it is currently showing what is my role, right? What is my role, when I say my role, what is the role of the currently logged in user in this particular AD? So the role is global administrator, which is like, just the owner of this 
of this active directory right of this azure active directory so that's what i'm trying to tell you uh, the user with which you sign up or you create your azure account that user gets the global administrator role in the azure active directory kind of the biggest role in the azure active directory now having understood that you can also go ahead and basically connect this azure ad with your on-prem active directory in case you are setting up your azure account for your uh, for your enterprise right for your enterprise organization in that case you would surely be having an on-prem active directory right let's say your organization name is abc so you might have uh, something like abc.com right uh, so you i mean basically you can link it right and after that all the users which are there in your organization which might have let's say peter at abc.com peter would be able to use his uh, his organization credentials or his already existing ad credentials to log into the azure portal that part we will try to discuss in more detail as we move forward first i want to just set up the base here correctly so i hope you understood that we create you know we signed up for a user and what role that particular user has in the azure ad right that was the point number two now we need to understand that in order to in order to go ahead and operate within a subscription right a user needs to have certain rights so so the thing which i'm trying to explain you here is the existence of user is always there in the is there in the azure active directory but then what this user would be able to do in a subscription depends on the role which that user has got in the subscription right that is something very important to understand so if i go here guys you see i'll go to subscription quickly on the left hand side subscription so as you can see i've got this particular subscription and it is showing that in this subscription what is my role what is the role of this currently logged in user knowledgeindia.in at gmail.com the role is account admin right what is this particular role we need to understand if i click on this for a moment right before i explain you further if i click on this and then you go to access control iam basically you will be able to see that what all role assignments are there what i mean who all have got access to this particular subscription but as you can see i do not see any entry in this page right it says no user assignments exist right so here is something for you to understand there are two types of roles which are supported okay so within a subscription you would have azure rbac roles and you would also have classic subscription admin roles right so classic subscription admin roles or administrator roles are the older ones i mean when azure started at that time this thing was there and after that azure rbac roles also got introduced right so what happens is right just please hear me out clearly what happens is when you go ahead and create a new subscription right automatically the the user with which the account was created that account that user gets the account administrator role on that particular subscription right so in order to just make it clear i created this particular account with knowledgeindia.in at gmail.com user that's why this particular user automatically got account admin role for this particular subscription right now one more thing you need to understand that what how many classic uh, subscription roles exist right if you go to this particular page I, I'll, I'll put this link in the description below read through this later on it will surely help you so if you see there are three classic subscription administrator roles first is account administrator then service administrator and then co-administrator right so now what happens is for any new account this is the important thing see here by default for a new subscription the account administrator is also the service administrator right so i'll i'll show you this if if you do not read this info it might it might look confusing to you but see here now here on this page you are seeing that my user has got account admin role if i click on the subscription and then i go to iam on the right hand side of course in the role assignment I've, i haven't got anything in the role assignment our back roles come okay so we'll come there for a, after a while on the right hand side you will see something called classic administrators so in the classic administrators if you go ahead and click so you'll be able to see that 
our username is coming here and the role allocated for that particular user effectively here is service administrator why is it happening this way because of this explanation which i told you right so the user with which you created the account automatically got account administrator role and what happens is in case when you go ahead and create a new subscription automatically the account administrator you know would also be the service administrator that's why you are seeing this particular entry here now i mean i can just go ahead and create any resources in this subscription because i am the service administrator and service administrator is quite powerful right i mean it has it has it has kind of all the rights to go ahead and create or delete or modify uh, any resource also it has got rights to add any other user and give access to our subscription right so it's it's basically equal to owner right now you might be thinking what is owner owner is part of our back roles so basically two types of roles we'll we'll try to cover roles in more detail right <laughs> i mean it will take some more time and i'm trying to make sure that each and every uh, video in this series is small in size to ingest at one time right so there are two types of roles to summarize you have got classic subscription admin roles and the second one is azure rbac roles azure rbac roles are there like owner contributor reader and so on right and of course you can go ahead and create custom roles as per your requirement as well so i'll i'll actually show you in one video how to go ahead and create custom roles and uh, new users all of that please understand users exist in ad and then they are given a particular role with which they'll be able to access and operate inside a subscription right one account can have many subscriptions so currently in our setup i created an account in the first video and then i created one subscription if i want i can go ahead and create more subscriptions as well right now the thing is azure gives you bill at per subscription level right so that's that's the logical logical boundary right so i mean of course you can go ahead and further segregate that which resource or which resource group consumed how much money or how much uh, amount within a subscription but the but the but the logical unit of billing is subscription so that is something important for you to understand you also should know that the resource limits right basically the hard limits which are there what are hard limits hard limits are those which cannot be changed right so such limits are applied at the subscription level so for example if azure forces a limit saying that you cannot have more than x number of particular resources in a subscription then that is a hard limit right and such limits are there at the subscription level normally so there will be surely certain limits which you cannot change and you know if you are let's say operating uh, for your organization and it happens that you need to create more and more such resources for which there is a hard limit in one subscription then that would force you to go ahead and create more number of subscriptions because such hard limits you cannot change right so that is something really really important to understand that why do you go for multiple subscriptions one thing is of course that depending on the size of your organization you might want to segregate at different levels some organizations just consider that they are really big so depending on their different business units they'll go ahead and create different subscriptions whereas maybe some organization might not be that big in size so they would have one subscription but within that they will have multiple resource groups they'll have multiple uh, vnets and so on to segregate the resources and workloads right it really depends on the size of your organization and the amount of workload which you are looking to run and you know you should like we need to go through all the limits which are applicable at subscription level to understand that part very well so just to give you an understanding of what limits i'm talking about i'm showing you here from the documentation that what are those different limits which are applicable at subscription level for azure so for example in one subscription of azure you cannot have more than 25000 vms per region now for somebody it might be just good enough that number and for some customer it might not be good enough so depending on that they may choose to go ahead for more number of subscriptions right so if you go ahead and see something more let's say resource groups right how many resource groups can you create per subscription the limit the maximum limit is 980 so more than that you cannot create so i'm just wanted to give you an example of this of course this is available in the documentation but these these are certain criteria which you should keep in mind based on which you would go ahead and actually Uh, segregate and decide that how many uh, you know how many uh, 
subscriptions you should create within your account so look at the number of resources which you are running currently and which you would be running in future uh, get a correct stock of that and then based on that you should look at the limits and decide right so i hope you got an understanding that what all different accounts are there and how the permissions work what is the status of the default user which you have created right now we will meet in the next video where we will where we will further dive uh, you know dive deep into the infrastructure of azure and we will relate it with aws right in this one i have not got into that much in relationship with aws because when we'll talk about permissions and roles are back roles at that time we will try to draw parallels with aws im and that one, that way it would be helpful to you if you are liking this content and you have come to our channel for the first time please don't go without subscribing to this channel hit the like button and share it with your friends we have got a lot of videos on our channel from which you can go ahead and learn easily thank you guys see you again bye bye